Welcome to the Elite Life with Trisha and Kylie. This is where we'll teach you how to develop grit, give yourself grace, and succeed in real estate. So let's dive in. Are you good? I'm good. Here we go. Welcome, everybody. I'm glad you're here. You are enjoying another episode of Elite Life with Kylie and Trish. That's Trish over there. Whoop. I'm Kylie over here. And today, uh, we're talking about what the hell is happening. The whole world has gone absolutely mad. And all I'm hearing from buyers is, oh, there's no way I can buy a home. They're all getting snatched up. Nobody's selling. And from sellers, I don't need an agent because I can just sell my house all by myself. People are going to want it. They're flocking. They're asking me. Then why is it still on the market? So I wanted to sit down with Trish today and ask her to outline what is going on because All we're hearing from the mainstream media, from the news, from people, from everywhere that you look is that the housing market's going to crash. The housing market's going to crash. This is absolutely terrible. No one's buying and selling. There's no money. It's all garbage. I know it's all garbage. So Trish, with that beautiful, very messy intro, do you want to take it away? I do. (laughs) I do. Because (laughs) this is yet another subject that gets me extremely heated. Get ready. Um get because, ready well here's here's why right i post my listing in a facebook group the other day and some dude a random dude who does not have a job in real estate mortgages finance, oh they're my maybe. favorite experts in real estate. oh yeah so he drops this like gif about lumber prices are going up up uh, off of some random website so so you went on some random website you found some photo that says lumber prices are going up um oh it said uh survey says this is the worst time in the world to buy real estate. I'm like, okay, so some website went and asked four people on the street, (laughs) is it a good time to buy real estate? And they said, no, it's the worst time in the world. So now we're going to go and perpetuate that into the world as facts, right? Mm. And that is what is happening right now, people. Can we all like get some perspective and get a grip on what is actually happening? Everybody is listening to idiots randomly like spouting off garbage and then they're perpetuating it as facts. Well, it's not facts. It's not. <laughs> it's garbage. Um and the other thing too is um What in the hell was I going to say? Oh, people are talking about, like I said, the crash, the crash, the crash. So can you back it up for us? Because you were in real estate uh, when I was not. What? And all I remember is my brother got a mortgage in like 2007. And within a year, maybe two years, maybe three, it's all a blur. But he couldn't afford the payments anymore. So what he did was... Oh, I probably shouldn't put this out there. What I've seen people do, (laughs) they couldn't pay their mortgages. So they're literally emptying the house. And now it's all, it's it's more garbage. So, okay. So with all of that, I talk too much. Back us up, take us back, tell us what happened so that we can, like you said, get some perspective um, on exactly what is happening now and talk about what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. So here's a history lesson, friends, and everybody needs to listen. Everybody needs to listen, not just people in real estate. In the subprime implosion, what happened was mortgage companies would go, hey, you got a 700 FICO score? Great. We'll give you any mortgage you want. So you had waitresses that made $2 an hour saying, I make $20,000 a month. And they're like, great, here's a million dollar house. It was called a stated loan. So they were allowing people that if you had a FICO score over 600, you were allowed to state that you made any income you wanted. Now, these are facts. I was a loan officer and a realtor and a loan processor during this time. This is not made up. This is not read. This is actual facts of what was happening in the world. So we did stated loans. You stated what you made. We gave you a house accordingly. So you had all kinds of people getting houses. No, no proof of income, no no bank statements. Damn. There was what was called CESA, stated income 
income, stated assets. So I stated I make $500,000 a month and I have $500,000 in the bank. And they said, oh, you got a 700 FICO score. You must be telling the truth. Okay, here you go. And if you had lower than that, like a 600, they said, okay, here you go. We'll just give you a slightly higher interest rates. And since we're talking about interest rates, interest rates during that time were between a six and a 10. Okay, so what? everybody like freaking out like, oh my God, interest rates are so bad. Interest rates on average in, in the history of interest rates, your average interest rate is around a 6 to 8% interest rate. Okay, So that's the normal that's totally okay the norm. range. Yes. And back in like the 60s and 70s, they seen interest rates that were 16, 17, 18%. And, and, and nobody died. And nobody died. So everybody freaking out like, oh my God, I got to get a 5% interest rate. In my 20 years of real estate, 5% were great up until the last few years when they went lower. And what they did by making them lower was put us into a recession. So, you know, that was great for that time, but it's not the norm. So the norm was the six to eight. So back to our history lesson, right? So we had stated income, stated assets. We're giving homes to people who cannot afford them. Not only that, we did subprime lending, which means, hey, your house is worth $100,000. Well, a hundred percent loan to value is a hundred thousand dollars. You know what? Let's let's do one fifteen loans. So we were actually lending, not we, the banks, not me. Um, but I was I was a loan. I feel officer. like I'm just filling out the paperwork. <laughs> I'm, I'm filling just out the doing paperwork. my job. Um, but I worked for Decision One Mortgage, where they gave a hundred and fifteen percent LTV loan to value. So your house was worth a hundred. We gave you a hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. So a hundred grand on your mortgage and an extra fifteen thousand dollar check at close, so you could go buy furniture or blow it partying or whatever you sell felt right get your hair done yeah get your hair done and here was the 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 biggest piece of it all we put everybody on what were called arms and that is an adjustable rate mortgage oh that sounds fun right so sounds like a bad surprise yeah but everybody would go what happens if the rates go up and everybody always said they'll never go up so it's not a problem so what happened but it's an adjustable rate mortgage yeah yeah it's literally in the name yeah but here's, here's, and people go, well, why would they choose them? Because people are short sighted. You always go for the lesser payment. So you had the option to get a 30 year fixed rate, and that was like, say, a 7% interest rate, or you could get an arm for a 6% interest rate. Well, we want that lower payment, so we choose the arm. And then they would add on what were called prepayment penalties for even lower rates. So you were like doing what's called buying down your rate. So, okay, well, if you prepay your loan in the first, year, we're going to charge you five extra percent. Well, you're already over, right? Like you already borrowed 115%. And now if you go to close it out early, they're adding another 5%. So can you see what happens? Oh, now I owe 120% of what my house is worth. That makes no sense. You can't, right? So <laughs> mathematically, <laughs> why I don't understand. The, the numbers are not adding up here. No, they don't. So our interest rates adjusted. Nobody could sell their house for what they needed to pay off their mortgages. So what happened was people got mad at the banks yeah. because they put them into bad loans. Even and- though... They signed the paperwork. They did. They were adults and they signed the paperwork and they knew it. They wanted that lower payment. So they chose that lower payment. And then they got mad at the banks because now the banks are like, hey, you got to pay us. And they're like, I can't pay you. So then they stripped down their houses. So then we go into this huge foreclosure because people can't pay. They can't sell. They stripped down their houses. Now the houses are worth even less. So that's why we've seen the market crash because humans did it to themselves. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> This is not a natural occurrence? like Yeah. So I'm mad at the bank because the bank gave me more money and I spent that money and they gave me a lesser rate and now I can't. I can't pay back what I owe, right? So I'm going to get angry with this bank that doesn't care. And I'm going to strip down this house, which, by the way, is illegal, because I committed fraud by saying that I made more money than I actually did. For the record, no one I know did that. Not a single person that I know did that. But in good adulting, we're going to blame everybody but ourselves, right? We're going to blame the banks. We're going to blame the government. We're going to blame all the people, even though, again, we sign these papers. We... 
We know we borrowed more than our house is worth. We know our rate can adjust. We know we don't make the amount of money we said we did on the loan application, right? Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. That's what happened (laughs) and why the foreclosure boom happened, right? So what happened next was is banks tightened up those guidelines. No more stated loans. No more lending more than what the house is worth. None of that. And now, guess what? The market started to get good again, right? And now, okay, only people that are responsible and are actually making what they're supposed to be making and buying houses according to what they actually make and only fixed rate mortgages are happening. So we organically rebuilt the housing market, right? Slow and steady, slow and steady, slow and steady. And we got to the pandemic where we dropped interest rates because we needed people to continue buying houses and we gave all this money for COVID and we did all these things. Well, that has to correct eventually. So what is happening today is a correction. It is a correction. It is a market correction, okay? We're re-evening out interest rates. And yes, guess what? Home prices are higher now. But we are in the Midwest. And probably most of the people that are going to listen to this podcast are in the Midwest, right? Are listening Yeah, so so preach some perspective here. Yeah. Let's talk about not in this region. Right. What's happening in places where we're not paying attention? Right. So you have places like the, the East Coast, like your, you know, um, New Hampshire and all of our East Coast friends, Massachusetts, Maine, all of them, and people on the I West I love that Coast. you know all of those. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my family in Lowell. Yeah, Waterford um, School District <laughs> failed me. <laughs> and all our people on the West Coast in Cali, their property values have always been high. And now they have skyrocketed, right? So people are now moving out of those areas and moving towards the Midwest. And us in the Midwest are sitting here crying in our cereal that all that's happening is that our property values are starting to even like get near the rest of the U.S., okay? We are still not even near what like California was before their values started rising or Massachusetts was before their property started rising. So we have always been extremely spoiled in the Midwest by having very low priced homes so you can get a gigantic house for not a lot of money here. So now we're getting gigantic houses um, and they're costing a little bit of cash, right? We are we are correcting. Yeah. <laughs> we are correcting. We are evening out. And I know that there's going to be people that this makes them very mad. But here's the thing, guys. There is no, there is no crash coming because mathematically it can't happen. And By law, it can't happen quickly. And here's why. For all of our listeners in the state of Michigan, let me explain how real estate works in the state of Michigan. Okay, so because I have a ton, a literal ton of investors who are sitting on the sidelines right now saying, I'm going to wait for the foreclosures. I'm going to wait for the foreclosures. So yes, please, please outline that process so that I can send this podcast to my investors and they can understand that by sitting on the sidelines, they're only losing money. Well, number one, what they need to realize is actually the rate of foreclosures has gone down. Which there, is good. There, there are less. Good there are less foreclosures in 2022 than there were last year and the year before. That's so awesome. So our foreclosures are declining, guys. Declining. This. These are facts. Declining. Oh, so people are responsible and able to pay their bills and exactly. make their payments. Oh, that's great news. Yes. Um. And the people that did actually go into forbearance during the pandemic, guess what? Because values are going up, they can sell their houses for what they owe. So for a hell of a lot more than what they owe, probably. They're making money if they have to sell. So there's no foreclosures coming. And if, 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 let's say today 20 people stop paying on their house, right? Today, 20 people stop paying on their house. Here's how it goes to foreclose in the state of Michigan, all right? 20 people stop paying on their house today. You have to be three months behind, three months, 90 days behind before foreclosure proceedings can start, all right? Then they start foreclosure proceedings. That's another 30 days. Then they go to sheriff sale. That's another 30 days, right? So we're at five months already from the day you stop paying till a sheriff sale can happen. If all things are perfect, if the bank is super on top, 
top of it, which banks aren't, you're at five months. Well, in Michigan, we are a redemption state. So you get six months rights of redemption to redeem your property in the state of Michigan. So you are now at 11 months from when you stop paying before you can be foreclosed on and your redemption period is over, okay? And then they start eviction proceedings, which takes another 90 days before the bailiff puts your crap on a curb, right? So what are we at? We're at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 months. 14 oh, I'm so months. glad you can add because we've already established that. <laughs> so 14 months from the day people stop paying to get foreclosed. So guess what? No foreclosures are coming anytime soon. You're 14 days out from if they started today, which they're not. They're not. And the other thing is, like we just talked about, if I got my, I bought this house two years ago, right? Two years ago, I bought this house. I owe 390000 If I go to sell it right now today, I can get $600,000 out of it. I'm offended. I am absolutely offended. And I did nothing. Nothing. But move your shit in. But move your shit in, <laughs> right? So if, if I stop paying tomorrow and I go like, oh my gosh, my house is going to get foreclosed, I'll just put it for sale and sell it. Like there's no foreclosure boom happening, guys, because the, the value of houses isn't going to go down. The only way it goes down is if everybody gets foreclosed on and wrecks their houses. That can't happen. So this, this media per perpetuation to fear monger all the people in the world stop letting it work guys yeah turn the Sh damn television off share this podcast with others so you can share actual facts and actual history and actual math <laughs> oh math we're mathing now and then to top it all off let's say some people do get foreclosed on we are still at an extreme lack of inventory so when we talk about months of supply so if today all agents stopped putting houses on the market in the, st in the city of Livonia right now, we have 0.9 months of supply, which means if today nobody put another house up for sale in the city of Livonia, in 0.9 months, we're out of things to sell. So if people were to even get foreclosed on and the banks do get some inventory and put it out, all we're doing is finally having enough to sell to the buyers that are buying and people will always need houses, guys. Yeah. You're not going to sleep in your car or in a tent. So somebody is always going to need somewhere to live. There is always going to be real estate happening like like let's let's get some perspective right the word of the day is perspective let's get some perspective yeah i feel like we say that a lot like people aren't going to live in their house or their car they have to buy a house so there's still going to be people buying we are at an extreme lack of inventory so even if we get some inventory yay finally that's good it's good for buyers it's good for sellers we are still in an extremely healthy market we still have interest rates that are great having a five percent interest rate a six percent interest rate even a seven percent interest rate is a great rate if you're in the midwest your property values you are still getting a really nice sized house for not a huge chunk of change and let's remember how much money people are making is also going up you go get a job at like kfc it's like 20 bucks an hour right now yeah so again perspective like yes you used to pay less for a house but you also used to make 250 an hour right now you're making 25 bucks an hour yeah so all all things are not being looked at equally like let's look at the big picture the big let's picture. take a bird's eye view yes absolutely so, and then last but not least you this, have more i do i have one more thing and then it's my turn because i am an reo agent and i sold houses for banks all through the foreclosure and the short sale and all of that thousands of homes i know that guess what banks don't just give houses away oh they don't they don't they don't just give them away so if a bank does get a house you know what they do they have an agent go and look at the house and they have a builder go and a contractor go and an appraiser go and they say hey guess what this house needs these repairs it's worth this and so they go hey agent this house is worth two hundred thousand dollars i want you to put it up on the market for 205 really yes because we want to get money for our houses and we know there's no other houses on the market. So get us our 205. So everybody waiting for the banks to just dump you some cheap houses, like stop. All you're doing is making it so that when you do go to buy a house, you're going to buy a more expensive houses because values are either going to stabilize or keep rising. Yeah. And there is, even if we get some inventory, again, it'll only be enough to start correcting things. And we are not going to see that 
for a minimum of two years due to the redemption laws. And these are laws and facts. These are none of this is my opinion. This is history, laws, facts and experience. Well, awesome. I like that because I feel like <laughs> I feel like that's a lot of what our country's lacking right now is facts. and <laughs> Right, and history. right, right. For sure. um, so I wrote down a couple of things I want to share with everybody super duper quick. Um, ways, things you can do to prepare for and be successful um, if you're getting ready to buy or getting ready to sell. And this first one here might sound self-serving, but you need to get an agent, okay? Absolutely. When you break your foot, you don't go to your neighbor and have him cast your foot, reset everything, take an x-ray. You go to a freaking licensed professional, okay? Yes. And I know that for whatever reason, like, okay, so I'm going to get some flack for this. No, I am not putting real estate agents in the same camp as people who have gone to medical school, okay? What I am saying is, again, perspective. You go to the dentist. They have a license. You go to the damn hairstylist, and they have a friggin' license, okay? Let professionals do the job. If you're buying and you think that for some reason – you're going to be able to talk to the list agent, get a super duper deal. The list agent doesn't give a shit about you. Their job is to get their client maximum amount of money and advocate for their client's interest. So whether you're working with an agent and or not, you, you go to the listing agent, you have your inspection. Are you prepared to negotiate on all the shit on that inspection list that you want to talk about? Or are you just going to get steamrolled because you don't don't have a representative and you you wouldn't you wouldn't go to court for uh god I don't want to say murder because now we're equating real estate with murder <laughs> <laughs> but that's my point is you trust people who have experience who know what they're doing who do this literally every day and this is one thing this might be a better one so when I was going in to have my babies I was super duper nervous about getting an epidural and the one thing that people kept saying is yes there are risks but these people do this literally all damn day. They do this all day. So that cut should give you some peace in knowing that everything's most likely going to be fine if you have an advocate. Now, on the seller side, if you think for one hot second that you're just going to throw a for sale by owner sign up in your yard and all these people are just going to flock and fight over your house, you're cheating yourself. You're kidding yourself because what sells homes is expert marketing, professional marketing, understanding what you're looking at, and being educated by a friggin' professional. OK, so that's number one might be self-serving, but it's the fact that homes that are sold by realtors, fact, mathematical fact, homes sold by realtors sell for 15 to 20 percent more than for sale by owners. So if you're putting your home up for sale by owner, you're not doing the professional marketing, you're going to throw it up on Zillow and you're going to get a bunch of calls from realtors anyways. And you're trying to save yourself that what, five to six percent when you could be paying that five to six percent and getting 20 percent more. Yep. Okay, so that's number one. We're moving on from that. Get a damn agent. Get Connect agent. with somebody. You need an agent in Michigan? I know some. I know one. Okay? <laughs> Call me. 248-795-1905. Okay? We'll talk about it. All right. Number two. Don't get caught up in the hype. We just gave you a whole bunch of information, hardcore, serious, solid facts, information. Turn the TV off. Turn turn the Facebook off. Quit listening to your neighbor whose sister's brother's cousin's mother's aunt sold a house and this and that. Like, Stop buying into the hype. It's not as bad as it seems. It's not as doom and gloom. It's actually pretty good. And we're not just telling you this because we're real estate agents and we want people to buy and sell houses. We're telling you this because it's the truth is the truth is the MF and truth, as Andy says. Well, it is. Like, that's what I responded to that guy. I was like, you know when were bad times to buy a house? In the 70s when interest rates were 18%. During the foreclosure market when they were covered in mold and garbage and falling apart and you had to change change your time and energy and money for a cheap house like you're paying this money no matter what would you rather walk into a house that's already done or sit there and spend your blood sweat and tears for the next year cleaning up mold and disgusting water and gross that's gross yeah or let's talk about after the foreclosures oh short sales those took between 13 and 16 months to close you want to sit for 13 and 16 months and hope that the money you just put into an appraisal and inspection and all that actually works out and the bank says yes to your short sales no, it's a mess. Those were bad times to buy. This is a great 
time to buy. Sellers have their houses in mint condition and they're beautiful because they want to sell them for top dollar. So buyers get to walk in and unpack in a beautiful home and still get a good interest rate at between five and 6%. Like this is a win-win market. It is fantastic. From 20 years of experience, right now is still one of the best times. The only better time would be like last year. (laughs) <laughs> and nobody was buying then because it was a pandemic and there were murder hornets. So there's always got to be something, y'all. All right. Well, that's all the fire we got for you today. We need to save some to get through the rest of the afternoon because it's going to be a doozy. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Please share across whatever platform you're listening on. If you're listening on iHeartRadio, if you're listening on Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, all of these great places, share it. Leave us a comment. Leave us a five-star review. If you have any questions or if you want to talk more um, about anything that we've said, um, if you want to fact check Miss Trisha here, because um, that's what our country's into right now, um, give us an email. It's yeah. Kylie, K-Y-L-E-E at MyStarsAcademy.com. We'll get you set up with a coaching call. We'll talk to you. We'll give you the facts and we'll give you the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth. The truth. <laughs> <laughs> and we're out. <laughs> We thank you so much for joining us today on the Elite Live with Trish and Kylie. Be sure to share the episode with a friend so we can continue bringing you more great tips on grit, grace, and real estate. You can also connect with us on Instagram, Facebook. We hope the ideas we share continue to help you build an empire and leave a legacy.